My name is Emma Oval, and the title of my project is The Controlled Hallucinations of a Fragmented Gaze. The project digs into the complexities of the gaze and uh, focuses specifically on the fragmented gaze as a consequence of a mass information society. I'm using the glitch as a metaphor for this consequence, but it also refers to the digital sphere as a primary source for this accelerating tempo. Uh, I also connect this to the power structures of spectatorship, uh, woman as image and man as gaze. The project will become public in two parts. Uh, one part being a physical installation with the images and the texts on um, at Valen Street Gallery, um, but also through the distribution of posters on uh, Gothenburg City's uh, public poster boxes. And uh, generally in my artistic practice, uh, I deal with um, fragmented and disrupted portraiture and about uh, looking and being looked at. And I use painting as a way to transform and um, uh, transfer information from one medium to another, from photography to painting, uh, moving between digitality and uh, traditionality and adding um, a kind of slowness to images and uh, like a time-consuming contrast. Hello, my name is Tristan Bridge. I'm an artist who works with sending mail. Uh, the title of my project is Tlan Language and it's going to be shown as an online archive. Salon Language is a mail project where I've been writing to different players who reside within World of Warcraft, asking them to send me a contribution. Um, I'm really interested in World of Warcraft as a site for language mixing because of the different languages that come together within these hubs. So the languages, for example, that we, we, that we bring with us, like English and Swedish, for example, as well as the, um, <laughs> as well as the uh, languages that come about in this space. So for example, there are two factions, Horde and Alliance. Um, if you belong to the Horde faction, you can't understand characters who uh, come from the Alliance faction. So this creates really interesting moments of circumloc circumlocution, where the usage of your in-game body, your avatar, is necessary in order to bridge the language gap. Um, so I'm interested in this multilingual site as a site for learning, and I want to encourage further blendings of language um, going into the future. So, uh, so firstly, the project is going to be shown as a collection. I'm going to be collecting the different mail contributions from these people I've written to within the game. And secondly, the project is going to be an in-game talk slash tour that I'm going to be hosting um, in April, where I'm going to be inviting people from the outside to join me in this space and we're going to be talking about the different language mixing and different language blending that occurs within these hubs. My name is Marijn Dijkmeijer and my project is called The Nervous System. It's a film about how animals live inside other animals as stories live inside other stories. So it departs from the idea that uh, stories, either fictional or non-fictional, shape our understanding of reality. Um, the film is a combination between animation film, uh, filmed footage and uh, drawings. Um, and uh, it tells a story about uh, the evolution of an organism and that all humans are a symbiosis with other living things. At a certain point in the film, it's unclear if the symbiosis is benign or parasitic, just as sometimes uh, stories can be benign or parasitic. Um, the project expands into an emailing project, uh, so the film is sent out to people uh, with the question if they want to watch it and if they want to respond to it with, um, with an, an anecdote or a story or an, a drawing. All the responses are gathered and edited to make an 
a parallel story. So a, a kind of a mutation of the film. Um, and in this way I hope to emphasize how stories travel and change. My name is Jamie Hudson. I am a British artist living here in Gothenburg. I am, my pro I'm working on a project at the moment called Death Forms. It's all to do with the representation of death at this very particular moment where there is this very specific kind of deathly atmosphere during the pandemic, sure, but also more generally um, at a time of kind of climate crisis and really like rampant anthropocentrism. So I've been researching death as a subject and also researching uh, narratives that involve death and representations of death in art. Um, I've been also thinking and looking a lot at the art made in previous pandemics, previous plagues, particularly the 14th century Black Death, um, after which there was a kind of really big surge of artists making representations of death um, and this very dominant um, representation of death as a, as a kind of skeletal human figure. So the way my project is made public is as a, is as a website. So um, I'm thinking through tarot at the moment, which is quite interesting. And I'm kind of thinking about different ways to represent death. And one of the really important parts of this project as well is that I make all of these kind of tools and these forms of, of, of representation accessible. And um, I'm really interested in this work falling into the public domain in a way that is it's possible for other people to pick it up and carry on where I've left off. My name is Lisa Inglesson Halvai. My work is an interrogation of my relationship between painting and the identity that I have as a woman. The project that I am presenting is divided into three categories that also lead to the title of this project, which is Body, Story, Action. In my mind, these three categories are also the way, ways in which my own identity as a woman is created. The three-part aspect of this project are represented in three ways in which the audience can access this. The first part, which is the act, is also a two-week YouTube live streaming of my studio here at the Valland Academy, where you can see me work within my studio. The second part is the story, which are texts and poems based on my own personal diary notes. These will be read from my studio window out on the street. This will be un unannounced. It will only be heard by those who accidentally walks past my window when I read them out loud. The third part are bookable visits to my studio, where you will be able to walk around freely by yourself but you will be watched by me through the camera lens. My name is Peter Nylund, and the work I'm presenting is called We Are Here, or We Are Here. It's a project concerning um, the lives and the stories of LGBTQI plus asylum seekers and newly arrived persons to Sweden. And we get to take part of their journey here and their stories about what it's like being them in uh, this city and in this country as large. The work is presented in two parts. The first is collected on a web page called viahar.net, and the second is a poster exhibition made in public space at Esperanto Platzen in Gothenburg. Participants in the workshop are newly arrived LGBTQI plus in individuals who have gone through the either gone through the asylum seeking a process or are currently in it. And having come in contact with them as a volunteer for RFSL Göteborg and their newcomers program, I realized that this group was a very marginalized and extremely creative group that somehow needed to be heard.
The project is about providing the space for otherwise marginalized and silenced voices to tell their stories to Gothenburg and to Sweden at large. My name is Susanne Foglund and my project is called All Dolled Up Deepfakes. I explore how virtual and human bodies are manipulated and represented in today's technology-driven societies. In this project, I utilize the controversial deepfake technology. It is based on artificial intelligence that creates realistic videos with manipulated faces and bodies. A recent report found that 96% of all deepfake videos were pornographic, featuring real people without their consent. In all dolled up deepfakes, I let artificial intelligence try creating whole bodies from images of fragmented sex dolls and sex bots. The project consists of AI simulations, deepfake videos, digital sculptures, and an artist book. It will be available on my website and in selected libraries. My name is Laila, I'm from the Netherlands, and I'll be graduating with a short story about a post-delivery worker on a fictional island. And she's asked not to only deliver post, but also messages between all the people she meets. The work will be published online in the form of a click-through narrative. I was in my early 20s and I wanted to work on the island to get away from people. The city I resided in was overflowing with tourists. The roads couldn't handle the traffic and I tasted the exhaustion fumes in the air I breathed. The rents were rising faster than the sea level, causing my friends and acquaintances to move away after our studies were over. I was living in a shared flat and I was hyper aware of all the daily rhythms of my roommates and neighbors by being able to follow the sounds that they produced. It was easy to dream away about the life on the famously disconnected island for the Einzelgangers and writers who were working on their manuscripts, offline and off-grid. I wasn't working on any manuscript. I didn't have any ideas of my own. I wanted to escape from all the voices and the inputs around me, to find out what would occur to me when I was alone. My name is Johan Inquist. I'm doing a project called Ornamentation, which will take place at Folkets Hus in Vännersborg. Uh, the project will consist of uh, sculptures and paintings that will be installed and presented uh, throughout the, um, the Folkets Hus building in Vännersborg, which is also my hometown. Generally, in my practice, I work uh, first and foremost with painting. It's my main medium. I am very interested in uh, aesthetics, different type of imagery, I would say, is at the center of my practice. I draw a lot of inspirations from interiors, patterns, decorative objects, uh, the type of things that we surround ourselves with. Uh, in a domestic setting or a home environment. And I think of it, these aesthetics as, as referential, uh, a referential type of imagery. So there are things that we live with, things that are part of our past and part of our everyday life. And, uh, and hopefully the paintings will, uh, will feel like they, they refer to to things that uh, one is quite familiar with, but but at the same time it's uh, presented in a way that's uh, kind of different from the way you're used to seeing it. My name is Clara Aldén, and the title of my uh, project is The Mother of Frankenstein's Monster. In this project I collaborate with my children in different ways to examine the production of bodies and identities uh, that takes place in relation to motherhood. This uh, project will become public through an audio essay, which is intended to be listened to at home. Um, this essay is structured around Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, 
and it speaks about the child as an unruly descendant of the mother, about control loss and um, and production uh, within pregnancy and motherhood. In this project, I've worked with casting in different ways. I've worked with 3D scanning and printing uh, and CNC milling. And I have uh, also worked with casting in traditional ways with plaster and alginate and concrete. 